The render layers are pretty easy at first um, if you want to use them simply. So here I just have a foreground object, some mid-ground objects, a background, and a ground plane is here. Um, it kind of looks like the floor, but it's actually ground. Alright, so um, what I'm going to do is over here in the channel box, I'm going to switch from display here at the bottom to render. And every scene is going to have a master layer by default. I want to add my foreground object to a new layer to render it on its own. So I'm going to select the object and then go to the last icon in the render area over here to make a new layer. When I click on that layer, I should only see the objects that are inside of it. I'm not going to see anything else. Um, it's usually a good idea to rename these because it can get a little confusing. Just double click. Um, I'm going to say foreground and go back to master. And I'm going to grab my mid-ground objects and add those to a layer. Okay. I'm going to rename this uh, mid-ground. And then I'm going to go back and grab the one of the farthest distance and call that background. Now, these are all going to be composited together in the end, so the problem might be, let's say, um, my background is very tall, and when I look at the background without the floor, it just keeps going. So if I don't include the ground on that layer, I'm going to have a lot of extra data that I don't need. So the ground is usually the most common piece that you're going to be compositing or um, adding to layers and not being able to see it. So if I kind of look around here, um, let's say this is bigger. Um, so I wanted to cut off this object without being visible in the background layer. So what I'm going to do is grab the ground and add it to background. So with the ground selected, I'm going to right click on background and say add <laughs> objects. Add. So when I go to background, I s should see it or not. Let me do it again. Okay, so now in background I have the distant object and the floor. Now I could leave it visible, however I want it in mid-ground as well. And if I had it in mid-ground and background, it would be composited twice. So that's usually not a good thing to have. Um, and I actually prefer it to usually be visible in the mid-ground because on the mid-ground, I'm going to have a lot of shadows and it's closer to the camera. The background, I just want to cut it off. So what I'm going to do is, with this layer selected, I'm going to grab the plane <coughs> and I'm going to right-click on it and say Material Attributes. And I come to Lambert 1 by default, but you want to go to this other tab in the Accurate Editor, Initial Shading Group. I see it's connected to Lambert 1. Because I'm on the background layer, what I can do is right-click on Surface Material and say Create Override. It should turn orange. This means on this layer only, this is true. Okay, now I'm going to break this connection by right-clicking again and say Break. And it did it to everything, apparently, even though I didn't want to. That's okay, we'll fix that later. Um, so again, I'm going to go to Material Attributes if you've lost that window. And we've got to map something in. And for this, because we want it to be invisible, I'm going to choose Use Background. Okay. Now, this background piece, I don't want it on Use Background, so I'm just going to assign it back to a different material. Um, assign back to Lambert 1. I don't know why it decided to do that, but usually it's okay. Um, so now you'll see that the floor is this really dark gray. It should just fade away into your background, the space of Maya. Um, and then this one's on Lambert 1. So when I kind of get my camera back here and look at my master layer, everything's normal. The ground still has this normal texture. Um, but on this layer, it's going to be like a mask. It's cutting off my background there. So if I were to hit Render, oh, let's not render all layers. Let's just render this one. You see that it's black down here. This is the back wall, and this is where the floor cuts it off. So that's very good. Um, you sometimes notice that these render layers have a red circle on them. You can just update it by hitting it once to refresh. Okay, mid-ground layer. I'm going to want the ground there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it and right-click on mid-ground and say add. So now it's there. I'm not going to use use background on this. I mean, you could. Um, up to you. I... I think it's okay, but when I go to mid-ground, you see the ground keeps going. If I were to composite this, it would cut off the back wall, so that's not good. So again, I'm going to turn it into a mask. 
So on the mid-ground layer, right-click, Material Attributes, find the plane node here, which sometimes doesn't always open it the way I want it to, so let's try this again. There we go, Material Attributes. So again, I'm going to create override and break this connection. It keeps wanting to do everything. I don't think it will do that if you have textures other than Lambert 1. Just kind of keep that in mind. You might have to manually fix it. Um, again, if you lose it somewhere, just go back and right click um, and map in something else. Use background. There we go. These guys I got to go put back on a different material because it overrode that as well. Lambert 1. All right, now use background is good and all, but it's not good by default. Um, if you look at the settings for it, actually, you find it, use background. Reflectivity is on. Make sure you always turn reflectivity off on that material. So you can always use the hyper shade to find that. So when this opens here, I see use background and reflectivity of 0.5. I'm going to put that to zero. This one I already fixed to zero, so that's all good. So I have background with a mask, mid-ground with a mask, foreground. I don't actually need the floor in that one. That's going okay. Um, and then I have the master layer. Well, I also need the ground somewhere. You kind of got to decide how you want to do it. Um, order does matter. So if I render this, I would put this on top of everything else. Then I would put these guys. Then I would put this background layer. And I need the floor. So I'm going to render this separately, and I'm going to make sure when I composite, I render it behind everything else. So I'm going to grab the floor and add it to its own layer, and just say ground. And that's going to be last. So what's going to happen in compositing is we'll render foreground, then I will layer the midground, then the background, and then put the ground underneath everything. Because there's nothing else behind it, so that can be last. Okay, so this is all good. Um, what I can do here is if I want to do custom render settings, I click on the little gear icon next to these layers, let's say the foreground. Um, I can click on the gear. This is really close to the camera, maybe I want it to be a higher quality. So I can, I'm on Maya Software right now, but um, let me quickly load in preferences, plugin manager, all the way down, Maya to Monterey. Okay. So if I want to, I could say on this layer, quality, I want it to have a higher quality. So I'm going to right click on quality first and say override. Now I know I'm in the right window because it says render settings at the top with foreground in parentheses. So I know I'm on that layer. So this means that on this layer only, quality can be higher, maybe more like 0.4. Lighting quality, again, I could create layer override, maybe go up to something more like 2, increase the quality there. Okay. Um, now, important thing to note with lights, if you want whatever you want it to look like, you need to include the lights in that layer. So if I had physical sun and sky, I'd want to add it to foreground, and the midground, and the background, and the ground. Um, so usually your lights would be in every single layer, and they can be in more than one at the same time. When I go up and switch to rendering, render, batch render, it's going to render each of these layers automatically into its own folder. So when I go to my project, which you should be setting with file, set project, there's going to be a folder for foreground, and inside that folder will be tons of images with just this inside. There'll be a folder for midground, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay.